So in, in magnetic field, the first uh, topic is, uh, is a, just uh, simply uh, looking at the concept of the magnetic field and how we uh, produce them. So uh, first of all, uh, we know about uh, the meaning of the field from our previous uh, knowledge that we have used in gravitational field and in electric field. Uh, about the field, that what what is a field? It is actually a three D space or uh, region around an object, and then uh, over here the source will be the source for the magnetic field will be a permanent magnet. It can be a current uh, current in a wire or number three. It can be a moving charge. So a moving charge can also uh, produce um, magnetic field. Okay, uh, next thing, how you identify that uh, magnetic field is there. So, so the most simple one is the magnetic compass. Magnetic compass. Uh, we use magnetic compass to identify that a magnetic field is there. Or the next thing is a moving charge particle experiences a deflecting force. When this happens, we say that uh, there is some uh, magnetic field over there. Okay, the next thing is how to represent uh, the magnetic field. So the magnetic field patterns. Um, well, if, if we want to represent any field, we represent all the fields through lines. So those lines are known as Field lines, like in gravitational field, we represented that <clears throat> with uh, with the the gravitational field lines. We represent electric field with electric field lines. So similarly, here we'll draw the magnetic field lines. So to draw the magnetic field lines, we have to use a unit north pole. This is an imaginary thing. Uh, it's like it's like just a needle which con consists of only north pole. So this is just the North Pole and it is imaginary because you know, uh, magnet magnetic poles exist in pair. It is not possible if we have only North or South Pole, but here we just have to make the assumption in the same way, in the similar way that we have made in the gravitational field, like if this is Earth and you need to plot the gravitational field line. So what you do is you take a unit mass, you drop it, and then the path followed by that object will be represented by gravitational field. In the similar way for we use for the plotting electric field, we use a test positive charge that is an imaginary charge having no mass. So we put that uh, inside the uh, near the charge for which we have to plot the field. And then of course, this charge is going to feel the repulsive force. So we connect that with this charge. So that, that line is known as electric field line. So similarly for magnetic field, we use a North Pole just uh, just the north pole of any magnet and we place it uh, we place it like uh, at the points where I am just making the dot so we just put the north pole over there and then we see that uh, what uh, is the path taken by north pole so that path is represented by these green lines so the north pole will move like this and so that is represented by the lines and as all the North Pole are moving uh, toward away from the North and towards the South. So that's why, that's how we plot uh, this uh, magne magnetic field around the bar magnet. Uh, the next thing on the right is, is the iron filings. Like what you can do is iron filings method. So what we do is we just place a bar magnet like in the diagram you can see I'm not just outlining that this this is the north pole and the south pole like I um, bar magnet is there we place the bar magnet beneath a paper and then we sprinkle the iron filings on it and uh, then the iron filings take the shape as it is uh, as it is represented here the diagram that I am shading in, in yellow so iron filings arrange themselves along the direction of the magnetic field so we, we this is a quick way to observe the magnetic field pattern around a uh, bar magnet so two method one is the compass method which is on the left and one is the iron filings method which is on the right and you know this is this is from the o levels actually okay let's move forward uh 
the next thing is the magnetic effect of the electric current. Like the one thing is all the permanent magnets are having, of course, the magnetic field. The second thing is when current flows through wire, uh, then it generates the magnetic field as well. So uh, let's let's imagine in the first uh, diagram, uh, the current carrying wire uh, is there. So it is represented by a vertical brown line and current is flowing inwards. Okay, whenever current flows inward, uh, uh, current is whenever current is directed into the plane of page, we represent that with a symbol which is a cross. Like, uh, like we represent the wire with the circle and a cross. So this, uh, this shows that current is moving inward. Current is into plane of paper. Current is into plane of paper. Like this is a symbol for a current carrying wire. Instead of drawing the whole wire, we just draw the circle. The circle represents the wire and the cross represents the direction of current, which is into the plane of the paper. Okay, so this wire will be uh, surrounded by the magnetic field lines and the magnetic field lines will have two features. Like there will be two features of these, mag these magnetic field lines. Okay, so the features are, the first feature is that the magnetic field will be in, in the form of concentric circular patterns in a plane which is perpendicular to the plane of current in the conductor. Like the magnetic field will be in the form of concentric circle, like all the circles will have the same center as the wire, wire will be their center. And then the next thing is that the magnetic field pattern is perpendicular to the wire. And the second uh, thing is the gap between the adjacent field lines increases as one are uh, as one move away from the conductor. So it means that uh, like at the center of the conductor, the gap between the lines is smaller. As you move away from the center, the gap between the lines increases. That shows that as you move away from the center, the magnetic field strength started decreasing. Okay, so for the second one, uh, we see that the in, the in the second example, the current is moving towards the top of this paper, uh, which is represented uh, by a circle and a dot. Remember, the first circle is actually the wire, so there must not be any uh, any circle on it. Like there must be no there must be no arrow on it actually, right? So on the first, there should not be any any arrowhead. So it means that it's like this is the wire and the dot means that current is moving out of plane of paper. Like if you're looking at the screen, so at the moment, the current is moving towards you, right? It is moving out of the screen. So this means uh, current is out of plane of screen. Like current is moving towards you, across means current is moving away from you or into the plane of your screen. Okay, so uh, the thing is, if you want to plot the uh, plot the magnetic field around the current carrying wires, you have to use a rule which is known as right hand uh, grip rule. So the rule is I'm going to write here rule to find direction of magnetic field and that rule is actually uh, known as right hand right hand grip rules so what how we use right hand grip rule it is it is illustrated over here uh, what you have to do is you have to use your right hand this is the first thing use your right hand hold the wire in your right hand and then point your thumb towards the direction of flow so if current is upward you have to point your thumb upward and then you have to rotate the fingers around the wire so the direction of rotation of the fingers around the wire will represent the direction of magnetic field. As you can see, the direction is uh, that you can do that as well. Just point your thumb upwards. That is like you are holding the wire in your right hand and current is upward, so thumb is upward. Then curl the finger and just look at the curl of the finger. Is it clockwise or anti-clockwise? Of course it is. 
uh, anti-clockwise. So you say, okay, all the magnetic fields are in anti-clockwise direction. So that, that is the rule um, through which you can find the direction of magnetic field. So uh, the main thing is uh, you have to point your thumb. So we say point towards a conventional current, like the current due to flow of positive charges. And then the next thing is curl of fingers. So the curl of fingers will tell you the result. So curl of, curl of finger points towards magnetic field direction. Okay, so that's all we can plot the magnetic field. Um, well, uh, I can I can uh, plot one diagram for you. Let's say if the current is moving out of the plane of paper, so that is dot, and then you have to represent the magnetic field. So the first circle should be very close to it. Second circle should be a bit more far apart. The third should be a bit more far apart from that. So first you draw that. And then you use right hand rule, hold the wire in right hand, point thumb towards flow of current, and then it is in anti-clockwise direction. So you will say that, okay, these lines are in anti-clockwise direction. So that's how you can plot the field. And in a similar way, if you have to uh, plot the magnetic field for a current carrying wire in which current is moving into the plane of paper. So what you do is you again draw the same circles with increasing gap between them as you move a bit. And then you have to use right hand rule and uh, right hand rule, point thumb into the screen and then the curl is clockwise. So that's how you can plot the magnetic field patterns around the current carrying wire. Okay, so, well, the next thing, the next thing is, uh, magnitude of magnetic field strength. Okay, so for the magnitude of magnetic field strength, magnetic field strength is actually B. We will, we will define it uh, after some time in this chapter, like electric field strength was E, which was electric force acting per unit charge, Gravitational field strength was gravitational force acting per unit mass. In the similar way, magnetic field is magnetic force acting per unit length of the wire carrying unit current. So in the same way we define it, but over here, we have to tell about the magnitude of magnetic field strength. So for a current carrying wire, for a current carrying wire, um, its magnetic field strength decreases as you move away from the wire. Right, so uh, like uh, if you want to measure the magnetic field strength at certain distances, like I can give you the example, like um, let's imagine that this is the earth and you want to measure the magnetic field and its radius is R and its mass is M. And at different points, uh, at different distance from the surface of the earth, what we ha you have to do is you have to measure the, Mag the gravitational field strength. So on the surface, it is gm over r square. Then if this is r apart, so at the other point, it will be g is gm over 4r square. Then on the next, it is g is gm over 9r square. So in the similar way, you can find the gravitational field strength at any point. In the same way, you have to find magnetic field strength around the wire at different distances. So you will be using this formula. B is mu naught I over two pi R. So B is magnetic field strength. Mu naught is the permittivity of the medium. Its value would be given. So this mu naught is permittivity of the medium. Permittivity of medium and it will be given, given in the question. I is the amount of the current in the wire, how much is the current flow? And then R, R is the distance of that point from the center of wire at which you have to um, find the magnetic field. So it's, it's already mentioned over there, mu naught is permitting permeability of the free space, uh, not permittivity, but permeability of the space. It is written over there, so no need to 
right extra. Okay, and then its value is four pi to the power minus seven. It's given in the data booklet. I is the current in the conductor. R is the distance of magnetic field line from current carrying conductor. Or R is the distance of point from the center of conductor at which you have to find magnetic field. So this formula is only used for wire. For other for coils, for solenoid, we'll have different formula, but this formula will be given in the question. You don't need to memorize it. It will be given in the question. Okay, the next thing is direction of magnetic field lines. So for the direction of magnetic field lines, I have already told you that you'll be using right-hand grip tool. You have to point the thumb uh, towards the current and the curl of finger will point towards the direction of the magnetic field lines. Okay, the next thing is in, uh, in the magnetic field pattern, the next thing is a coil or a solenoid. So what is a coil? A coil is just like a, a straight wire is there. So you wrap that, you wrap that in, in circles. So that is coil and then the solenoid, this, this diagram is of solenoid, the spring. The spring is actually a solenoid. Okay, so uh, the, the right side is the actual solenoid and the left side is the diagram of the solenoid. So we say that it is a metallic wire um, coiled on a dielectric medium, dielectric medium like an insulator. Insulator medium, it can be a plastic tube, it can be a cardboard tube. Uh, that forms a solenoid and it becomes a magnet when the current flows through it. So this, this is interesting thing that when current flows through it, uh, this solenoid converts into a magnet. So we have to see now how it is uh, converted into a magnet. So let's see here, uh, what we do is we connect, uh, we connect the two terminals, the two, these two terminals with the, with a battery. So let's say this is the negative terminal of the battery and this is positive terminal of the battery. So when current starts flowing through this, uh, this uh, solenoid, uh, what happen is that uh, uh, a magnetic field is produced by all the separate coils like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So all these turns produces magnetic field. And as all the turns are similar to each other, that's why the magnetic field would have the same direction. So in order to find the magnetic field direction or as it is equivalent to a bar magnet, like usually we say that a solenoid is equal to a bar magnet. So if a solenoid is equal to a bar magnet, so you know that bar magnet is like this, north and south, and then there are lines around it as well, uh, like the magnetic field pattern is there. So in the similar way, the solenoid, the solenoid, when current is flowing through it, it will ha also have the same magnetic field like the bar magnet, and it will have the same north and south pole. So in order to get that, which end will be north and which end will be south, what we do is we use a uh, right hand grip rule again. That is right hand grip rule. So how we use right hand grip rule, uh, this time what you have to do is you have to point your curl of fingers towards flow of current because you know current is flowing in the circles in the coils so what you do you you say that okay hold the wire in hold the solenoid in your right hand such that your curl of fingers should be pointing towards the direction of the current as indicated here with the red arrows and then you have to stretch your thumb so when you stretch your thumb the thumb will point towards the north side of that solenoid so it means that using the right hand grip rule, you can identify that which side of that solenoid is a north pole. So if one is north, of course, the other would be the south pole. So that's how you identify that. And then you will make the pattern. The pattern is pretty much same for all the solenoid as it is drawn over there in the diagram. You can notice that in the center of the solenoid, the lines are straight and parallel and very close to each other, right? And you can notice that at the edges, the lines are spreading. You can see here, the lines are spreading, spreading and getting far apart over there, getting curled. So the magnetic field is strong inside the solenoid, right? The inside the solenoid, the field is strong. So we say strong field is inside and then the weak field is outside. So here the field is weak and inside it is strong. The next diagram on the left side is again the sketch diagram. 
for for that and uh, for the same solenoid so that's how we make the solenoid pattern if if i if i drew that for you uh, like if if you have to draw that yourself how we draw that we say that okay imagine this is a solenoid coil and then what we what we do is we connect that with the with the with a switch and then let's say positive terminal and the negative terminal positive negative and switch and imagine imagine that the wire these wires are the front which i am labeling with red these are on the top <clears throat> okay so what we do is when we close the switch and we close this switch current starts flowing from here and then current goes in front down so you use your right hand rule so we say okay you use right hand rule so uh, just try to uh, apply that rule here on the diagram hold this solenoid in your right hand and then intend that your curl of finger should be uh, should be coming down uh, and then you can see that the thumb of your hand will be pointing towards your right so this side is uh, the north pole and this side is the south pole once done with that what you have to do is you have to draw the lines so how you draw the lines the first line would be straight the next line would be straight from the middle and bit curved from the end the third is same straight from the middle and bit curved at the end and it's like this and same pattern you have to draw on the bottom side of that so that's how you draw the pattern. And as uh, the lines leave from the north, so you will mark the direction like this. And as they enter into south, so you mark the direction like this. So this is the solenoid magnetic field center. Solenoid magnetic field pattern. Okay. So uh, if, if you want to, like there are some factors, let's discuss the, those factors as well. If you want to strengthen the field of this solenoid, how you can do that, like how you can change the field. So how you can change the magnetic, how you can increase the magnetic field strength, magnetic field strength is B. So the first thing that you can do is increasing the current. So just increase the current. And you know, in order to increase the current, you need to increase the EMF of the battery, use a high voltage battery. The second thing that you can do is you can increase the number of turns. If there are 10 turns, make them 15 or 20 or 40. Like if you increase the number of turns, the magnetic field strength uh, is going to increase. The third thing is uh, the cross-sectional area. So just so decrease the cross-sectional area. A is the cross-sectional area of this solenoid. The, like the cross-sectional area means this area, this area, the area uh, which I'm shading in the red. So this is the cross-sectional area. So if you decrease that area, the magnetic field strength is going to increase. Okay, so uh, let's move forward. Uh, now everything is written over there. Let's just quickly go through this. Uh, it's about the field pattern of the solenoid. Inside the solenoid, the magnetic field is uniform. That is equidistant parallel line directed from south to north. So inside the solenoid, inside the solenoid, the field is from south to north. We're talking about inside, like inside these this we are sharing. So you can see that inside the solenoid, the magnetic field is from south to north. But outside the solenoid, of course, it is always from north to south. Okay, so outside the solenoid, outside the solenoid, it is the non-uniform field, that is gap between the adjacent field lines vary and it is directed from north to south. <coughs> okay. Okay, so the next thing is uh, magnitude of magnetic field strength B. So uh, inside the solenoid, if you want to find the magnetic field strength, that that is uh, by this formula B is mu naught and I, where mu naught is the, again the permeability, permeability, 
of the medium n is the number of turns, uh, number of uh, turns uh, per unit length of the coil. Like n is number of like small n is the number of turns per unit length. Capital N is the total number of turns, and small n is number of uh, lengths per unit length of the wire. I is the current, so that's how you can find magnetic field inside. And about outside, if you want to find the magnetic field strength outside the solenoid, uh, you can do that by using the formula, same formula, but divided by two, U dot and I over two. But again, these formula would be given in the question, so no need to memorize them. The next thing. Okay, the next thing is the direction of the magnetic field. So, well, I have explained that as well, but it's written over there, so let's just go through it. So, uh, we use a uh, right-hand curl rule, a right-hand grip rule. What you do is you just uh, grip the solenoid in your right hand and you point your uh, you point curl of fingers towards the direction of the current, and the thumb uh, will give you uh, the direction of the of magnetic field that in which direction the magnetic field lines are going or uh, the thumb points uh, towards the north pole of that solenoid as discussed earlier. Okay, the next magnetic field pattern is of flat circular coil. Flat circular coil. Okay, flat circular coil is uh, actually made uh, by bending a long wire. Let's say it is a long straight wire. So what you do is you just bend that wire and you bend it like this and you pass it through a paper, like, like, like the two holes are there, of course, and you pass it through that and then you connect that with a battery. A battery is there and a switch is there. So that represents a flat circular coil. Flat Circular coil mean one loop coil. One loop coil. Okay, so uh, you can consider that flat circular coil equivalent to two parallel current carrying wires. So we say flat coil is actually equal to two parallel current carrying wires with current in opposite direction with current in opposite directions like you can consider it equivalent to that how you can consider that you can you can look from here uh, the diagram on the right side the current when it is coil is coming out of the page the current is going upward and then it goes this way and when it is in coming into the page the current is going into so you can consider that a wire which is taking current upwards and a wire which is current taking downwards so it means that you have to plot two magnetic field patterns for two wires so uh, if you look upon carefully and, and let me let me help you by just removing the uh, these lines for you and then I will redraw them for you as well. So let's imagine that these lines are not there. Let's remove them. Now what you do is you first first you have to draw the magnetic field around around this wire. So let's just uh, imagine it. Okay so let's just imagine that uh, Let's just imagine that uh, the current is uh, flowing in upward direction. Like here, the current is in upward direction. So you see that, uh, use your right hand grip rule, point your thumb upwards, and then curl the finger so that will be in anti-clockwise direction. So just draw the pattern, it's like in anti-clockwise direction. And then do the same for, do the, same for the other uh, wire. The same for the other wire. And now this time, let me just uh, skip this. Let me just skip this. So you draw the magnetic field pattern for the other wire in which you know current is moving downward, right? Current is moving downward. So here, current is going out and here the current is going in. So it means when current is going in, the pattern is clockwise. 
Okay, so you drew that. Now the thing is, you can see clearly from here that uh, both the magnetic field lines, like you have to observe here in this region, the in the inbox region. If both the lines, if the if both the lines of both the magnetic fields are in the same direction, then you have to draw more lines here. And if they are in opposite direction, then you have to draw less line. But as they are in the same direction, so what you do is you have to draw more lines here. So see how you draw more lines here like this. Like over here, all the lines are in the same direction. So when they are in the same direction, it means the magnetic field becomes stronger here. So here, the magnetic field is stronger. So that's how you plot the magnetic field for a flat coil like it's here. Okay, so the thing that we have discussed, uh, everything is written here as well. So the field pattern around the coil, it's concentric circles in opposite directions and direction is obtained by as per right hand grip rule. And uh, then the next thing is the space between the coil. Like once you're once you're done with the uh, drawing the magnetic field for both the uh, ends, like this end and this end, then the space between the coils, this which I'm highlighting with yellow. What about this space? So the space between the coil, repulsive field as current in parallel conductors are in opposite direction. Magnetic field lines at the center is a straight line. It means that like you, you, you just have to see that if both the lines are in the same direction, then you have to draw more lines over there. And if the fields are in opposite direction, you have to draw less lines over there. Okay, the next thing is the magnitude of the magnetic field strength. How do you find the magnitude of magnetic field strength inside the coil? So between the coils, uh, the magnetic field strength uh, uh, decreases when the distance between the wires increases, that is the diameter of the coil increases. That's a common sense thing, that if the coil is like this and then the, if the coil is like this or if the coil is like this, so of course, if you keep the current same, like if the current is same, then of course here would be the maximum magnetic field strength and here would be the minimum magnetic field strength. It means that you have to use less diameter of the coil in order to get a stronger field. Okay. The next uh, coils are the Helmholtz coil. These are actually, the name is given due to the scientist Helmholtz. Uh, who invented these coils. So these are the two coils having same number of turns and same current uh, is flowing through them because both the coils are connected in series. Then they are they have same central axis, they have same radii, same radius, same dimensions, and they are plane parallel, they are plane parallel to each other and are used to produce uniform magnetic field in the region between the coils if the separation between the coils is equal to radius of the coil. So this is an important thing for Helmholtz coil and they look like this. So it means that these two are the circular rings and they are of equal dimension. They have same number of turns and the same wire is wrapped on both of them. And of course, same current is flowing and then their radius, their radius is equal to this, equal to the distance between their centers. So these are used to produce uniform magnetic field between them. So that's why it is known as Helmholtz coil. So it is here, so you connect them with the battery and then the current is flowing. And then you can see here between these two coils, uniform magnetic field is achieved. Okay, so the we are actually done with the with the first uh, thing of this. Uh, like we have uh, represented uh, uh, the all the magnetic field lines due to the due to the magnets, due to the current carrying straight wire, due to the solenoid, due to the coil, due to the Helmholtz coil. So this twenty point one is done, and now uh, now the next thing will be. Uh, 20.2, which is force on current carrying conductor.